Hey, y'all. Katie here with Team Evo AZ at EXP Realty. Thank you so much for listening to our show. We are super excited for this season. As you know, we are based in the Phoenix, Arizona area. But what you may not have known is that we're growing our team nationwide and we have already started. So if you know of anybody that is looking to buy or sell throughout the country, no matter what state it's in, please contact us. We'd be happy to help. We'd be happy to offer advice. And if you know of anybody that is either getting into the real estate industry or is looking for an awesome change in their career and in their lives, we are also hiring real estate agents across the country. Thanks again and enjoy the show. Hey y'all, it's Katie and Matt <laughs> with another episode of REAL, which stands for Real Estate in Life. Real with Matt and Katie. Yeah. So we're, it's about to get real here, folks. Really real. Yeah. And as you know, each month we're doing our Phoenix area housing monthly update. And we have the amazing Ryan Gilliam with Waterstone Mortgage on with us again today. Hello, Ryan. Hello. Great to be back. Thank you. Thank you for your time. How's everything going in your world? Everything's going great. I had, had a great Thanksgiving with the family. You know, we were, we did it outside, socially distanced, kept safe. And then we had a good one actually, given, given what's going on. Yeah. Good. I mean, like we're so lucky here in Arizona, right? Because yes. as you know, Matt and I come from New Hampshire and I don't know that we would have been having a socially distanced outdoor Thanksgiving dinner in New Hampshire last week. Right. So <laughs> yeah. we done it. it would have been cool. Yeah. We probably yeah. would have been ice fishing yeah. or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> that was the case. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I so saw we're your lucky here. Too, right, Katie? With, uh, with your son? Yes, yes. We're yes. so lucky here. I mean, you know, as you know, we have a boat on Swarrow Lake. We've been yeah. on the boat a bunch, um, hiking. Just the weather is just so fantastic here in the Phoenix area. So glad I live here. Probably never going to leave. No, it's home base. It is definitely, it is definitely home, home base. base. Yeah, right. So let's get to it, Ryan. What do we, what do we have yeah. happening in the mortgage area this month? What updates do you have for us? So first and foremost, you know, obviously the biggest questions we get are revolving around interest rates. And uh, we did see rates, um, you know, hit their lowest levels of the year this week. Um, so a part of the reason for that, there, there was a number of different reasons, but one of it is um, there's a, a Citigroup Euphoria Panic Index. And what that basically means, it, it, it's in terms of the stock market where they feel like it's kind of a little too, too hot right now or too bullish, you know, given mm -hmm. what's, what's going on right now with, with COVID cases increasing. Um, they do feel like uh, unemployment benefits are gonna be ending around Christmas time for almost 12 million people. And there's mm -hmm. no really stimulus that's in sight right now. So. What that means is they feel like the stock market is, is really high right now, given so much you know, negative stuff that's going on in the economy, that that's helping interest rates because a lot of people are starting to shift to maybe look at mortgage bonds and that brings rates down. So we did see rates at their lowest levels this week, which is really helping, uh, helping refinance volume kind of pick back up now. So that's one thing that we're seeing. Um, and what we're getting a lot of questions about is kind of what rates are gonna possibly be doing next year since we are hitting lows right now and ultimately we do feel like rates will be going up next year and there's a lot of reasons for that you know we do feel like there's going to be maybe another stimulus um, of course the vaccine that's going to be shipping out you know this month already that's going to help things a lot too um, and and they might be taking their foot off the gas a little bit with buying down rates with the federal reserve so because of that we, we might be seeing the lowest levels in december a little bit maybe in january but after that, we don't feel like we're going to be, you know, seeing lows. It'll probably start slowly increasing from there. So it's probably a good time for somebody that's been sitting the fence, wondering what the heck is going on to make some decisions here coming up. That's correct. Yes, yes. By the end of the year, early next year, is probably a good time if you ever thought about refinancing or even buying, of course, you know, uh, with, with rates being so low. Right, because, I mean, our inventory levels are so crazy low right now. I mean, let me just show you a slide real quick. Yeah. So check this out. Can you see that? Yeah. So this is basically our past year and this is taken directly from the MLS. I haven't filtered it at all. So this is absolutely every listing that appears on Armless. Um, and it's showing you the month's inventory. Look at the last couple of months, like from wow. June 
through November. We are just hovering around that one month mark. If you look at November 2020 versus November 2019, look at that. I mean, we are considerably lower and we were low then. Yeah. We were feeling it then. And, and even you can even look at it and you know that it's about it's a 30 day reflection, like a shadow. Um, so a lot of the data you're looking at it even started in May. Um, so that's wow. crazy. Yeah. So our inventory levels are super low. Um, here in the Valley, in our industry, we kind of throw around, hey, you know, what's a balanced market? How many months inventory is a balanced market where there's enough supply and demand to keep things balanced, right? And that's, I've heard people say it's anywhere between four and six. I've heard some people say, you know, six months is, is inventory is a good balanced market. And then I've heard some others kind of lean toward four. Yeah. We are very far from either one of those. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think yep. that's true. One of the things that's pretty healthy too, though, is when we look at the stats, especially from like last month, we had 87, um, 8,759 units closed, but we also had 7,887 units added to the market. So it seems like there's a pretty good little balance of new listings, you know, along with closed listings, which is really helpful. So... Yeah, but with the inventory levels, I mean, I don't have a crystal ball, folks. I don't. But talking about interest rates going up, I don't know. I mean, I think it's going to take quite a bit of consumption or, or addition of, of inventory on the market for our prices to move in the downward way. Oh, yeah. I don't, you know, I mean, I think just my crystal ball, once again, it's not super <laughs> clear, but um, it's, it's, it's going to take a lot to really see things go down versus mm -hmm. flatten, you know, and I think, you know, that, that we're, we're seeing that all, all forecasts are saying that, you know, realtor.com nailed it where they're last year when they projected 2000 um, and twenties numbers and they gave us around a 9% um, appreciation rate and they nailed it. And they're, they just released their report um, and they're saying the same thing. They're saying closer to 11% for the Phoenix Valley in 2021. Wow. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of indicators that 2021 is going to be just as fruitful as 2020 when it comes to <laughs> real estate. Um, so I think that's just another reason for people to say, hey, we know that rates are going to be going up. Yeah. We know that inventory is going to be down. Um, that's just the perfect ingredients for a, uh, hey, let's buy a house now. Yeah. Um, so I talk to people day in, day out, you know, sometimes having multiple conversations a day about this. And I have had a few conversations or, or a few comments coming from, you know, various buyers in various stages that say, oh, well, I'm, I'm just going to wait for the prices to come down next year. And this, this, what we just said is my conversation. Like, this is my response. Hey, look, we have indicators that are showing that the rates are going to go up, mm -hmm. but I don't think the prices are going to come down. We've got to yeah. just, we yeah. have to have way more inventory than we have right now to, to even slow what's going on. Yeah, and, I agree. And we talk about well, that one thing that we're, oh, I'm sorry, Matt. Oh, no, I was just saying we talk about all the time how rates they play a bigger role if you're really trying yeah. to make money on your primary mm -hmm. residence and look at it from that investment. Like, Hey, I want to get it in a lower point or yes. you know what? The best thing is to capitalize on that rate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause a lot of what we see, cause uh, I know we were wanting to talk about mortgage application volume last, last month um, for refinances. It was actually down a little bit. A lot of that has to do with the Thanksgiving holiday, but we saw purchase applications increasing by 20%. Wow. And yeah. uh, so the demand is just going to continue. And what we usually see on rising rates environments is that people start getting off the fence when they notice that, hey, we're hitting our lows, rates are increasing. So typically in a rising rate environment, we see demand continue to increase because people start getting off the fence and they want to get in before they get too high. So with our lack of, of inventory, of course, and maybe possibly increasing demand, I really think we're going to continue to see those increases in, in home prices throughout 2021. So if, if you're waiting for prices to drop, it's, I, I really, just like you, Matt, looking at a crystal ball, I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> I totally agree. And there is some inventory that I'm not really able to track through the MLS and that's new build inventory. 
Right. And I, I'm seeing new build communities pop up all over the place. I'm seeing people have to be on lotteries in order to get property. So, I mean, if the builders are building and they're depleting their inventory as quickly as they're building, then obviously the market's moving swiftly. I mean, I think that that's an indicator too. Yes. Absolutely. And, and, and when you look at that, that new build sector and you look at it even into the future on when these new builds are scooping up big tracts of land and you hear these record auction prices going for big tracts of land. Which is happening. They're pretty oh, yeah. damn confident. Um, not just for 2021, we're talking about 2022 because a lot of these builds are going to take 18 to 24 months to finally get through phases that they're at and get onto that next level. And they're not slowing down one bit. So I, I think there's a lot of indicators that this isn't just a, a quick spike. There's some longevity. There's, there's a lot of healthy ingredients in, in Arizona right now. Absolutely. And you had mentioned, Ryan, um, that the unemployment benefit is going to expire at the end of this month. Is, yes. Is, yeah. Around, unfortunately, bad timing, of course, for a lot of families around Christmas right. time, unless another stimulus comes in and helps out. But that's uh, that's one thing that uh, people do feel like is going to be weighing down the economy, obviously. So they do feel like, you know, because the stock market is, is so high and it's been so hot the past month, they do feel like some of that's going to be transferring into lowering the mortgage rates. So yeah, we do, we do hope to see that, you know, help improve mortgage rates here for the next month or two. Have you seen any change in the um, numbers for people who are in the forbearance stage? Have you, do you think that um, at the end of the month, if nothing is put in to sort of relieve this unemployment thing and we're still dealing with COVID and all of that, do you think that we're going to see more distressed situations on the market than what we're seeing? Because what we're seeing right now is like little to no distressed yeah. activity. Right. Right. And we don't really feel like that's going to increase really in terms of, you know, uh, I know it's a lot different than it was back in 2008 through through 12. And I do think a lot of people are still thinking that that's why possibly um, home prices will drop is because obviously they, they felt like, you know, anybody who lived through 2008 through 2010 here in the Valley uh, or just anywhere in the country just knew that that was a little bit of a different market because there were so risky loans out there. But nowadays, the loans that we do have, the people who have those mortgages, they had to prove they qualify for it. So um, they're not really going to be going into foreclosure for a few reasons. They could afford it and they do have equity in their homes as well, too. That was something that was much different back in 2008 through 10. And now because of the stimulus that was actually rolled out, like you mentioned, Katie, there are a lot of different options uh, for forbearances and people are taking advantage of that. And a lot of banks, like including ours, are really doing everything we can to put people in a good situation, uh, you know, to get through this if they did happen to lose their job. So um, th that's going to continue. And, and those those forbearance options where you could skip payments, you could skip up to six payments and, and just instead of having to pay it back as soon as it's done, you could tack it on to the end of the loan and you would have to maybe just pay it back when you sell the home or you could pay it back when you start making an income again. So there is a lot of great options that weren't really there back in 2008 through 2010, that is gonna help people stay in homes. So there's not gonna be as much of a, you know, those distressed sales that we saw back then. Right, I think a lot of people are kind of um, still feeling the pain of, of that season <laughs> that we yes. had way back then. Yeah, and it's, you know, I mean, it's almost like a PTSD um, right. to a sense that whether you experienced, you saw your parents go through it or someone close, but, you know, the big thing to remember, too, is like everyone translates foreclosures to what that's really going to do to our specific marketplace and inventory levels. And one of the things that, you know, we have to remember is that we're at the mercy of that. If when that bank forecloses, if they actually let it go to the marketplace, you know I mean, if they set the bid at the court steps to an, an appealing number that someone's going to pay for. And right now we're not seeing that the banks are setting them really high because they'd rather keep sure. that in inventory. They know that it's, it behooves them to, if they foreclose in a home, let's not sell it. Let's just sit on it. Yeah. Um, and so that's where uh, another big thing that feeds into this whole, Oh yeah, banks are going to foreclose and we're going to be able to get good deals. No, I, I don't, I don't think it's going to play out that way. 
You yeah, know. I totally agree. And there would have to be a lot of good deals for it to affect our market at this point. I mean, yeah. if you look at this slide that I just pulled up a couple of minutes ago, you'll see down here at the bottom, our distressed sales, and this is taken, you know, this is October stats, 2020 from our months. Our distressed sales are less than 1% of all of our sales. Short sales dropped 60% over year over year lender owned sales decreased 47.3% year over year like it's going to take quite a lot like a wave of foreclosures to come onto the market in order for it to affect us i think and i 100% and, and as we talk to this it, it almost makes sense to think about this too um, if we're going to be affected by something nationally that same catalyst is going to affect the biggest state next to us, which is California. So we're almost insulated because if they're going to start screaming and saying, oh my gosh, we're affected by this thing that's affecting everyone, where are they running to? Here. They're running to Arizona and they're only going to insulate us further. And that's where I, I do believe we're, we're, we've got some Kevlar, you know what I mean? We're, we're pretty protected. So agree and you know speaking on, on a national level i heard this statistic the other day i love i think ryan i've told you this before i love listening to keeping current matters it's just yes. such a great publication and yeah. they had thrown out a stat and i honestly wish that i wrote it down so i'd get it exact but um approximately 40 percent of the mortgages that are out there the the properties that are out there are owned free and clear yeah, yes, that's correct. And, you know, just based off of um, my experience, you know, uh, from clients that reached out that, that were needing some for, forbearance help, you know, the difference now is that they, they want to keep their home. You know, right. they're going to do everything they can because, you know, since 2011, we've seen so much appreciation here in the Valley, even over this past year, you know, um, that's the big difference. You know, uh, they're not upside down. They're not uh, have negative equity and they just want to walk away or foreclosure short sale. You know, that's the difference uh, now. So that's why I think distressed sales are so low because people are going to do everything they can to keep that equity and to keep their home and find a way to, you know, either have a forbearance and continue to make payments down the road. So that's kind of the big difference that I'm seeing. Totally agree. And, and you guys tell me what you think, but I feel like there's a lot of media out there. There's a lot of foreclosures are going to triple, double, quadruple, blah, blah, blah. And it's like the media is kind of more there to terrify versus clarify, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, well, and I yeah, think that's all based on their algorithms that tell them they have these keywords for subject line clickbait and foreclosure is one of them and wait and do this. Yeah. And, you know, it's just, it's sad that humans actually love to hear bad news versus good news, but <laughs> I guess it's the nature of what we are. Yeah, yeah. so true. So true. Um, and then I just want to share this one last slide. Again, totally love Keeping Current Matters. David Chillers right there. He is a big guy um, at uh, with that publication. And um, I got this slide from a podcast that he did with Tom Ferry. Tom Ferry is like one of my favorite guys. And I thought it was really cool to look at and really interesting. So if, if you can see, it's a little blurry, but down here you'll see this is the year 1999 through the year 2020. You can see in the red where we had our giant foreclosure crisis, right? Between the years of, you know, 2008, 9, 10, in those years, 11, maybe a little bit. Um, and you could see how it really popped up. So they're running an average, it's just math, people. They're running an average of about 206 foreclosures per quarter, right? Well, look where we at. We are at 2020 quarter two, 23,900. For that quarter, foreclosure fine. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Incredibly low. So when the media, because they love to terrify versus clarify, says we're going to quadruple our foreclosures, yeah, it's not even going to be anywhere near the average that we're used to seeing. So no. bada boom. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh... I wish people could hear. <laughs> well, they will, because the purpose of this podcast, as yeah. you know, is to bring the real news to the yeah. real people. So thank yeah, you so much, Ryan, for being with us. Everybody, yeah. please do us a huge favor. If you like what we have to say, rate us, subscribe, follow, download on your absolute favorite podcast platform. We like iTunes. 
And we know that if you, it, downloading the episode is different than just listening to it. So please download the episode to your device. Do us a favor. That way iTunes and you know Google Podcasts shows us to more people so that we can get this real news out um, because we are not the media that wants to terrify. We are here to clarify. Absolutely. So thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much, Ryan Gilliam thank with you, Waterstone Ryan. Mortgage. You're very and- welcome. Oh, and if somebody wants to get in touch with you, I know you're licensed throughout the country. How, um, so it's not just Arizona, guys. How That's can correct. somebody get in touch with you if they'd like to? Just call me directly, actually. My office line works great. It transfers to my cell phone. I'm out. It's 480-635-3035. Awesome. Well, awesome. thanks, Ryan. We'll see you next month. Thank you. Bye, Bye guys. Bye, Bye guys. everyone.